Happy New Year and uh, welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory and we're kicking off 2024 with, well, with uh, excitement. How are you doing, JJ? <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. Good. So we have uh, fancy new titles, opening titles, opening credits in preparation for the inevitable call from Netflix saying... <laughs> You're ready to debut the Draw With Me series. Ready for your close-up? I have uh, I've considered having extensive cosmetic surgery over uh, the new year, but I haven't gotten around to that yet, obviously. You don't need it, babe. Thanks. Maybe hair implants? <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah, so it's nice to be back. Yeah, and, look at uh, all those jacks. Lo lots of cool jacks. We've been playing a lot of cards. We've been playing a lot of Rummy Cube. It's the tis the season for gaming. It's true. You sit around in the house and you, I don't know. What are, we, are we allowed to keep drinking? No, it's dry January. Now, uh, right? Yeah, it is dry January, so we won't be having any festive drinks. Should we talk about all the things we did last year? I mean, we did festive drinks about six times. Well, actually, I wanted to point out that we are going to be doing something a little bit different today. Oh. So if you're brand new to this and you're going, what do we is this really what it's like? It's not. We're just going to be doing something a bit more relaxed and fun today. But last year, we did so much work. We made so many things. We had 50 times that we got together over the course of the year. Maybe even more. Did we? We missed a couple 51. Weeks. 51. 51 times we got together. So let's, No, what, there must be. Yeah. Anyway. What did, we, what did we do last year? Okay. So let's start back at the very beginning. So we had come back from our dude ranch. And we did a pen-only landscape, which was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Then we did 33 things, starting with D, like which is that. a whole page I, of I do that one D again. lights. Then we made the Taj Mahal. We did optimistic quotes. We did a football player relay, which people hated. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hippos. Next year we'll do hockey. Hippos. Vermeer. Frida Kahlo. Yearbook portraits, which you did on the iPad, and people loved that. That was really fun. It was like 1957. Irish coffee collage. Yep, festive drinks. Uh, Puppy Day, we did Twiggy. Upside down Hirschfelds, which were very cool. That was cool. Bunnies, not beavers. Lunch. Cactus flowers. Crocodile. May the 4th, which was uh, some Star Wars stuff. Ten Eds. So when we kicked off our relationship with Edding, we did 10 Eds of Renown. The Big Salad, which I think is up on our wall, the a Big classic, Salad. We'd love yes. the Big Salad. Um, then we had a technical failure. Then we did Ships and Boats and Cezanne's Fruits, Lobster Two Ways. Uh, then we played the Eyewitness Game, which is always fun with mug shots. Then we did Coins, because we were showing a metallic watercolor. Then we did cow, we did movie candy, moths and caterpillars, dinosaur bones, quotes, uh, Linda Berry Easy character, album covers, uh, city critters, which was a rat versus a pigeon in New York, then fauvism, one of my favorite episodes, fall leaves, selfies, Six portraits using power of observation, where you had to remove the reference. That was a, that was a tough one. That was fun, though. Uh, kitten, which I think you did a supremely good kitten. Um, Tony's, gratitude quotes, manatees, a grateful page. I think that was over American Thanksgiving. Uh, Keith Herring, festive drinks, an illuminated letter, Santa, and then the playing cards. Can you believe it? Wow. I'm exhausted just, <laughs> just hearing that list. That was amazing. And we did a lot of great stuff. And, um, you know, I think we have to do some of those again because some of them were just really good. And I think we've done a lot since then. So maybe it's time to, to do it. Garrett says, I feel like I'm listening to Jeopardy categories. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Fauvism was good. Lorraine liked what I made. That's Fauvism, nice we one. got a tremendous response so many people sent in that there was really fun yeah and yeah. beautiful work and i think what you're going to do today is going to be in that vein right maybe kind of sort of looser playful yeah, yeah. playful uh donna's here for the first time welcome that's very nice to see you uh tina is here for the first time so good well it's great so what we're going to do so normally what we do is we do a drawing of a thing or a person or a place but today we're just going to play and i 
I, I remember this thing that I did when I was nine, I think, eight or nine. I invented this thing, which I didn't probably invent. But basically what it is, is you do a scribble and you color it in. It sounds pretty basic, but it's a really fun exercise because it allows you to, to just focus on mark making to focus on maybe colors to, and it's also a great opportunity to pull all of your art supplies out, even those ones that you've got sitting drying up on the shelf and just add them to it um, and just play around, play around. So I'll show you, I'll, I'll do my first little squiggle scribble. You can then do yours and then we can just get to kind of creating colors and creating color fields in it and having fun. So, so it's really, I think we too often we're kind of too often we just jump into drawing and we don't ease into drawing. And if you, if you think about like um, if you were going to run a marathon or if you were going to uh, play a game of tennis or something like that, you do some warm ups, you do some exercising, you limber up, you don't want to pull a muscle. And similarly with drawing, if you jump in, you go, okay, I've got a blank page, I'm going to draw this really intense portrait of a famous movie star. Uh, it's really hard. So what we want to do is just like loosen up and also get to to play, to play and have fun. And again, I think the way that I was when I was eight or nine is often how I want to get back. Um, Jane, of course, has come up with a name for this, or there is a name for it, Neurographic Drawing. Yeah, I don't know, maybe that's what it's called. But uh, we're not going to call it that. We're going to call it playing. Nine-year-old, nine-year-old, <laughs> nine-year-old playing and having fun. Neurographics be damned. But well, thanks for letting us know about it. The, hey. I'm sure, uh, Neurographic, apparently. Okay, so Neurographic. Play, playing is good for the brain. Okay, well, yes. We're going to call it... Um, I don't know, ninographic, being pretending that you're nine. You're so, <laughs> so, right. so here we go. Um, just get your piece of paper, and I have. And you're going to do just. I have loads and loads of things here. Can we just set the table? You're going to do one drawing, right? One, one drawing. Yeah. So. Honestly, I mean, we could spend hours doing this, but I have lots of stuff. I have a lot of markers that came to hand. I might use some watercolors. I might use some, um, I don't know, some pencils? color pencils. Yeah, pencils, color. yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to start with an 08, which is a fairly fat but not ultra fat. And I'm just going to sort of like doodly, squiggly doodle stuff around and see where it goes. And basically I'm overlapping because I'm going to be creating shapes because, again, as we... As we remember, drawing is just shapes. Drawing is just making shapes. So there, that's basically... You're coming off the screen when you go... Yeah, I think you okay, might need so to there, adjust your camera a yeah, little bit. There we go. There you go. There we go. All right, so that's, that is my... You cannot do this wrong. I mean, no way, no how. I, Whatever I, you make, it's exactly, perfect. Exactly. So then, I would just say, take a pen. Take a pen. I'm going to take this brush pen. And I, I, what I do think helps is to probably pick a color range or, co or a color, you know, like I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to go warm colors. So, you know, this is a gray, which is sort of warmish, but generally I think I'm going to go yellow, brown, orange, red. I'm surprised to he not hear you say pink. So it's funny pink. because we get dressed separately and inevitably wear almost the same thing. <laughs> Or some in some way coordinate, and oftentimes re requires one or the other of us to go change. Um, and we both came out with pink on today, which I think is extraordinary because we don't. We're in the pink. Yeah, but we don't typically. So I think that's. I would have thought you were going to pick. Uh, no. Nope. Coming up roses. No. Nope. Your theme. No. After you chastised me for dressing like you, <laughs> for cross dressing, I've decided to. No, but what I'm going to do is also, I, I want to vary my mark making. So there I just colored two in, but I think we could also, you know, just do some hatching if we wanted to. And we could, we could even draw little shapes to fill in a spot. The main thing is, and again, if you want to color outside the lines, absolutely do not. Are you going to make little patterns? Is that well, what you're doing? Oh, I see. Doing, yeah. Okay. I'm drawing little circles. Um, 
and we can combine stuff. So I'm thinking, um, Take some orange here, orangish brown, watercolor this time. And just color in a shape, and then I'm going to let it dry, and then I think I'm going to come back to it. Oops, I went outside the line. Yikes. Jail. Go to j directly to jail. I should have known. I'm throwing this whole thing away. This sucks. I ruined it. I think someone else commented it was their brand new sketchbook. What an awesome way to start. Perfect. Have this be your first page. Perfect. Perfect way to do it. I love it. Um, I'm gonna bring up my toolkit. Oh no. Yeah. I don't know why that makes me nervous. Why? Because I feel like the drawers are gonna fall out while you're broadcasting live. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. So I've got my brush pens here. And yeah, so I'm gonna. This is exciting. Coloring. I love. I don't get a chance to do it that often. But <laughs> there's Twiggy stretching. If anyone heard that, moaning and groaning. Moaning and groaning. But yeah. So let me zoom in a bit. So just in case you don't know how to color, I'll show you how to do it. I'll show you how professional the colors in stuff. The whole coloring book trend. Yeah, you're kind of obsessed with with that, aren't you? Not that you do it, but you're obsessed with the idea idea of it. You know. I feel like there is no hierarchy in art. I feel like, yes, it's great to draw from observation. I think it's also great to draw from reference. I think it's cool if you want to trace something. And I think if getting a page, you know, a pre-built page that you just add color to, it's just everybody, the world's a happier place if you're doing something. So... You do you, to quote a famous <laughs> book. I really love playing with colored pencils. I like taking a colored pencil and just going super dense colors over and over. So coloring books are sort of conducive to that. That's true. But here I'm seeing now that might have this particular thing that is dry. So now I'm just adding a bit of stuff to it. But I think this is also a good thing for those. There are days when you, you kind of feel like drawing, but you don't want to beat yourself up. So, you know, you just, you can do something like this, which is just, I mean, as Jenny said, you can't really do it wrong. It also gets your supplies yeah, gives activated, them right? Exactly. Like if you've got stuff that's just sitting around. They've been sleeping all, all fall. They're ready to get to work. <laughs> New year. I'm sort of intrigued by these. I got these recently. They're called mild liners. They are, they're just, they're these sort of, they're not pastel colors, but they're very, that one's a bit too, too intense, but they're designed to be sort of markers that aren't too intense. Mild. I like the name. It's Mild gentle. Liners, yeah. They're not really highlight, they're not highlight, highlighters. Highlighters? Highliners? Highlighters. So it's the new year. Have you made some resolutions? Have you broken resolutions? That's probably more interesting at this point. Here we are, four days in. Have you already failed? I don't really love resolutions. I don't. I'm not into this like self. Self improvement. Think, no, I'm into self improvement, but I think you know we have to just be gentle with ourselves. Life I, is tough. Life is hard hard enough without us being adding to it i, I am trying to do a bit more exercise as i do every year this time of year. i do feel like the christmas season the festive eating and drinking season as we like to call it here in the gregory household it just kind of tunes you it just primes the pump for abs abstaining and uh, a parsimonious approach to eating and drinking in january you actually look forward to it. It's not really like punishment. It's the contrast, 
right? You need the contrast. I mean, my liver said, no mas, lady, dry January. Yeah. I like dry January. Okay. How about dry February? We could dry it. I don't think we've ever done that. I'll drink to that. <laughs> um, I'm, my resolution is to increase my degree of self-flagellation. I feel like I haven't uh, been beating myself up enough, and I've been getting away with too much. It's time to knuckle down. I'm joking. Yeah. A joke. Sounds like I will uh, be moving out. <laughs> yes. This is, this is looking interesting. It's, you know, it's one of these, this is one of these um, exercises where you just, you just kind of like focus on a little thing and you just kind of go with your instinct and then you look back at it, and sometimes you feel good about it. Sometimes you go like, man, it was okay. A few people have commented their resolution is to draw every day. That's a great resolution. You know, if you're going to make one, let that be the one. I made a video, which is on this channel somewhere, where I talked about habits and how to, like how you should follow up. Because I think what happens a lot of times is you have a habit, I'm going to draw every day. That's That's your proclamation and then something comes up you have to go to the dentist you know you need to take your car in you're you have busy get busy at work and you miss a day and then you go oh forget it right that happens where you just i think from yeah you, you get stressed out you yeah, get stressed and out you and then like you failure. you default to some kind of unhealthy soothing type of thing well, I think I think you just you think you 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 can't do it because you missed the day. So my rule is try to do it more often than you don't do it. So if you miss a day, no bigs. No bigs. If you miss two days, okay. But then try not to miss the third day. Right. You know, and that I think seems reasonable. I mean, I think one of the other things is learning how to control your emotions so you don't get into these heightened states of, I think art helps you do that. I, I don't know. I'm, this is a roundabout way of saying the same thing you're saying in a different way. It's, it's if you're doing these gentle self-care practices, like keeping a sketchbook or even just doing a doodle once a day, then you're less likely to be freaked out when life happens, right? Yeah, I mean, I think it's you're centered. You're you're you've got you're in touch with your feelings. You've processed. If you have something negative happen, it helps you process it, move on, instead of keeping it bottled up. You know, you're you're. It's just a check in with yourself. It's almost you know meditation time. If anything. Yeah, I just made this video. I keep talking about my videos, but I just made this video this last week, which um, is about making art after you're 40. And I tried to talk about all the things that, that um, doctors, uh, researchers have found are the benefits of making art and how it reduces your cortisol levels so that you'd have less stress and, um, you know, how it helps with healing and things like that. So, you know, again, it's like, it's like exercise. You don't have to do it every day for it to have some utility. And if you don't keep up the habit, then try to try to come back to it. Try yeah. to be try to be reasonable about it. And at the very least, come to draw with me every week. That seems like a reasonably easy habit. <laughs> to I mean, I show up almost almost every week. I show up. Am I boasting? But you can So this might be. Uh, something everyone here already knows, but you came to drawing later in life mm -hmm. because you were in a situation where you had to process something extremely heavy and you were dealing with feelings of grief and, you know, meaninglessness. And this is, I mean, you talk about this because you've lived this. You're the proof in the pudding, right? You know it saved your life. That's, that's why I talk about drawing, honestly. And I think m so many of us misunderstand it. I think I did for a long time, too. I thought it was about making really cool pictures, which 
it can be. That is certainly part of it. But I think to me, the thing was the feeling. And I think even doing this exercise that we're doing now gives you a bit of that feeling, that feeling of just being present, of you know concentrating, being in the flow, experimenting, creating, all these kinds of things. They just make you feel good and they make you feel in the present. Um, another thing that I mentioned in this video is this quote from Lao Tse where he says, talks, I think, Jenny, you told me about this, that when you are feeling anxious, it's because you are dwelling on the future. Right. And when you are feeling depressed, a lot of times it's because your mind is focused on the past and that the solution to this can be try to focus on the present, try to be here now. You know, and that can often, that's something that you can affect. It's something. It's just practice. Yeah. It's being aware of it, right? Yeah, and it's really difficult to be present because there's so many things that, that take us away from the present. You know, just just our phones, you know. Well, phones, I mean, yeah. I'm, my mother is 92 years old and to some extent we are her caretaker. She does live in a very safe and secure place, but Every time my cell phone rings, you get anxiety. I my blood pressure skyrockets because I'm just waiting for what's going to be the next thing. It's so tough, and everybody's dealing with something. You know, every single person is dealing with something. Yeah, and I think I think just the fact that we have this distraction, we have this device available to us at all times, that means like if you aren't connected to the present, you can just open your phone. You know, so you're. You know, you you have to wait uh, for something. Well, let me just open my phone. And, you know, I, that's another thing I remember about being nine was, I'm so bored. Remember that? <laughs> and the days took forever. Ugh. I mean, can you remember when you would just think about, you know, how long it would take for a week to go by? I, I know. And now as an adult, how, I mean, it's shocking how fast a week goes by. But I, th I think people don't even know how to be bored anymore. I mean, I think being bored is not the worst thing in the world. It may suck when you're nine, but I think it's not the worst thing in the world to be bored. It, it allows your brain to kind of try and fill in the for you. And, <laughs> you know, you can figure out things to do to keep yourself occupied. But just being, I mean, I don't know. I've never been able to meditate, really. You can't meditate, can you? No, never. Yeah. I've tried. Maybe yeah. that's a resolution. They have apps for it now, which mm -hmm. I find to be, I don't know, I, I resist it with every fiber of my being, but that's probably means I need meditation. I also don't like yoga, let's well, be honest. I think that now they're developing it so that artificial intelligence can meditate for you. <laughs> you had to get AI in here. First episode of the new year. Where, are you going to say you people? Are you going to talk about you AI? I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with... Well, Maybe the leaf blowers will come. We've got so many leaves down. We had rain here in Phoenix last night, which is extraordinary for us here in the desert. But we have molting trees. Yeah, so this this is... I like it. You know, I'm surprised at how many little patterns you're putting in. That's not usually your jam. I think that's part of the fun of this is just inventing a little pattern, but also not feeling like, oh, God, I have to cover like a huge amount of space with it. I can just do like a little tiny one. And also trying to make colors that are similar not sit adjacent to each other. I think that that makes it more, you know, more interesting. So don't have two oranges next to each other. I'm sure hoping that you're doing something while you're watching this video. I I, no, there have been so many nice so comments tedious. where people are like, you know, heck yeah. But I, I let people are, I love that we avoid meditation. Thank you. I love that we're uh, in like-minded universe here. We'd, li we'd like to meditate, wouldn't you? I don't know. I mean, I like to see animals meditating. <laughs> Well, actually, you do. You can do the thing of staring out into staring out of the window and kind of yeah. That was <laughs> there, zoning out. There was a job that I was work back in my New York City life when we first started dating, and you said I've never met a person who can just sit and stare at a wall as long as you do. That wasn't meditation. That was like 
like some type of brain reboot when I was on like extreme adrenal fatigue. I couldn't even form words. Yep. Well, we got you out of there. Yep. It's time to bring in some watercolor again. Maybe a little bit of gouache. I was going to say, are you going to gouache it up? Well, as soon as I bring gouache in, it's going to be, might be wet. And, uh, I'm going to have to deal with that. So far, I've managed not to make too much of a mess. It is quite satisfying, though, to color in, to paint in the lines. I know that, like, I've watched illustrators doing this kind of thing, and it's always somehow really satisfying to see, like, oh, they perfectly filled it in. I was watching a video of a calligrapher who was doing, um, I think, writing Happy New Year, but over and over again on those, you know, little line ruled pages that you get for, mm -hmm. but every time time a completely different style and was so fluid and gorgeous and I just thought to myself wow I really want to do that I think it's about having great motor control I think it's practice it's like neural pathway right right yeah it's having great I mean <clears throat> doing this kind of a thing it's just an opportunity honestly to to develop your you know ability to draw parallel lines or you know coloring in within a section or those kinds of things which are all really useful to be good at you know and, and doing it here where it's non-threatening am i being too gentle with you do you like being threatened <laughs> you know what it is like i think there have been other draw with me is that were threatening threatening <clears throat> That, that football player relay, people are never going to let That was me your that. idea. I know, and I thought it was going to be... Well, one time, I think two years ago, we did a Winter Olympics relay, and people loved it. And I thought, yeah. oh, that'll be great. We'll do some version... No, football is not pleasing. Sorry about that, guys. I thought I allowed JJ to come up with that idea. <laughs> Because, because <laughs> I thought, well, wow, what if like what if we really got into football because of it? Even unlikely as that may sound, and it turned out that was not the case. No, live and learn. What's that quote? Uh, I never lose. I either win or I learn. Who said that? Some know, loser. Somebody smart. A loser. Jeez, showing our true colors. Here we are being all like kumbaya, and then in the middle of it, you gotta I got it. expose I, us. You know, <clears throat> like the scorpion said, it's my nature. It's the cynicism that will prevail in the end. You know, I'm a New Yorker. It's all about balance. It can't be sweetness and light all the time, or you, or you would be boring, I think. But you're always sweet and light. <laughs> This is metallic. I think there's room for metallic in here. It's it's a shame because the metallic doesn't really show on the camera, but it oh, is. It can. It is, look, so, look. it is so beautiful. No, it doesn't really. Sometimes it does. It adds a, it adds something a little special. It's also just using a brush pen to draw lines is really satisfying. Also, I like how it's making lines that are sort of variegated. Like a more organic way, like the way lines are in nature. Right. Yeah. They're not. It's not like coming out with a ruler. That's the thing that scares me the most is when people draw with a ruler. I remember seeing that. I used to see it when we lived next to Washington Square Park in New York, and I would see these students. I guess they were NYU students coming out with their drawing boards to draw the Washington Square Arch. And so many of them had rulers and T-squares. Now, maybe they were engineers what, I was say, or architects. Were they maybe architecture students maybe. or something? I mean, please, if you are an engineer, please use a ruler 
and uh, and thank you for your building, service. Thank if you. If you're building a <laughs> building that I'm going to live in, yes. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Look, there's we, a time and a place for everything. Are we now thanking engineers for their service? I mean, engineers they rule do, the world. They do. The, they take care of a lot of uh, public safety. They they make modern life livable. I should have been an engineer. It's funny how many uh, sketchbook school students are former engineers. That's it's true. It's a it's a pocket of uh, interest of overlap. Well, I think engineers, it is a creative field. And, um, you know, I think that, I think that there's, particularly for men, I think for men it was like it's an acceptable kind of field to go into when art may not have been, you know, be yeah, you're making perhaps. something. But it's amazing. We have a lot of engineers and also a ton of CPAs, accountants. And I feel like accountants just have to be the most creative people somehow. <laughs> it's so interesting. <clears throat> I, really? Yeah. I mean, it's it's stupendous. Crooked accountants, maybe. What? Crooked accountants. <laughs> no, I just I think it's a, a it's a skill that requires creativity. That you don't. It's one of those things that you think is kind of a linear operation, but that doesn't seem to be the type of brain it attracts. Maybe, Don't you think any that. job can be done creatively? Yes, 100%. What is a job that you wouldn't want them to be creative in doing? I mean, I remember when I had surgery and... I mean, I'm going to say flying an airplane. Well, but you want, uh, you want a, a pilot who is able to deal with an, an emergency situation creatively and figure it out, right? Uh, you can't just fly by the book if it's something like, oh my no, God, this, no, this, I, this. I want them to know exactly what to do in every situation, okay, but not think about, creatively. But think about like Apollo 13, right? Apollo 13 is like one of the great examples of creativity. And in a way, that's the ultimate pilot error or pilot uh, situation. Test, yeah. Test, right? I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, I, 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 I think uh, perhaps you've uncovered a, Deep truth. Thank you. That's what I'm here for. Every <laughs> Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific. <laughs> Deep truths and mediocre drawings available on demand. So, yes. Am I missing any interesting uh, comments? Someone, uh, Rachel G., I am an accountant. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> See? So are you creative? Proof. Yes, she's here. She's an... Rachel, I want you to submit your homework. We want to see it in the pre-roll film yeah, next we week, your some. doodle. Yeah, but also, are, are you encouraged to be creative if you're an accountant? My God, I started doing these, these little squiggly circles before I realized how large a shape <laughs> I had taken on. This is really becoming tiresome. But I feel like I can't, I feel like I can't stop. I have to fill in this whole shape. Well... Is this no, there's no corners to cut here. There are no corners, in fact. Or there might be some, but they're miles away before I sleep. <laughs> they sort of look like scales. Yeah. Or teeming masses. Gina Z has a good question. Yeah. She wants to know, have you reoriented your page, like to flip it upside down? I have not so far. Maybe, I think we're about halfway through. Do you want to? I think wanna... I've, sl I've, slipped it, I've slid it around a bit, but yeah. Maybe that's a great idea. I think, why not? If I ever finish this shape, I'll be, <laughs> I'll try that. Because right now it is. Jane, get me off this crazy thing. What did I ever do? Why? Why? And yeah. All right, so, so even though it's good to be in the present and right in the now, if I'd been living slightly in the future, I would have seen. Anxiety what ahead. I was, what I was, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that there was a problem. Lurking. I'm trying to not lose my consistency because the tendency would be like, oh, I'll just make them bigger or sloppier. But that would be okay too. No, absolutely not. I don't. Not I a, completely. I completely disagree. I am with you. extremely rules bound. And thank God I finally finished it. Oh, now I'm coloring in this shape. I happen to color it in almost the same color as the adjacent shape, even though it's, this is watercolor and this is. Micro brush. It's the tater. It's tater shaped, tater colored. Taters. I like them taters. All right. So, the reason I got out these brushes was to sh see how fun it would be to draw lines with them. 
Why don't you flip the thing over and see what happens? Here we go. Oh, that's so much better. <laughs> it's kind of becoming like a quilt, right? I mean, quilting is neuro quilting. Yeah, that's I like. I think that's a that's a I just coined that very term. cool thing. I'm going to trademark it. Hold on, I'll be right back. Um, how about a bit more Posca pen? It's just impossible. Love that scr scritchy noise. You do like it? Some I don't love that you scritchy don't love noise, it. no. Uh, I was going to say, some people really like it. So, hopefully you're also discovering something about your materials by using so many of them and just saying like, huh, this is not doing what I thought or I never knew that this could do this. This is an opportunity for that kind of... Marilyn said her doodle is starting to look like a big bug. Interesting. Hi, Twiggy. See, that's metallic. You can see the silver, right? You can see it now. If I move, you can see that silver. Snazzy. Metallics always make me feel like like a five year old, glittery. Yeah, special. You used gold leaf in one of your sketchbooks. I did. It was when you went to Thailand and you were doing a reclining Buddha, right? I did a bunch. I did a bunch of that. I actually so had. Did it last? Because that sketchbook is probably what seven or eight years old now. It did last. Um, it some of it fell off because I put it on with glue stick. Which is uh, kind of a kind of a crappy archival tool, but but I think I've told this story before that I used gold leaf in one of my sketchbooks, and I around the same time I came up with this brilliant idea, which is if I have some piece of watercolor, some like big chunk of watercolor, and I'm impatient and I want it to dry. You know, now I would use probably a hair dryer. But at this particular period of my life, I, I was extremely genius. And the idea that I came up with was put it in the microwave. Oh, dear. And it does work. I mean, you can put it in the microwave. It's just water. Right, so just like you can, oh no, that's another Not huge piece. Not gold leaf. Well, that's what happened. Is little fires everywhere. Suddenly, it bursts into flames. This is a sketchbook that's fairly full, mind you. Yeah. And um, <laughs> just come back from a trip. It had. So I immediately pulled it out. Suddenly, sparks were flying in the microwave. Oh, no. I pulled it out, and there was a hole that had burned through the middle of like four pages. And the last page of which was the gold leaf. So it's kind of, actually kind of cool. I mean, it wasn't completely ruined. It was just, I suddenly had this. It was memorable. Yeah, and now I've been dining out on that anecdote for years. <laughs> Kate wanted to know, was it real gold leaf or? It was solid gold. Imitation leaf. It was solid gold. I don't know. I bought, no, I don't think it was real. It wasn't real. No, You've probably got it at the... I bought it at Blick. Blick, yeah. Yeah, you can buy like a bag of them for like 10 bucks. I doubt it's gold leaf. It was very... It was... It was... But I, mean, I do look, remember... We're still talking about it seven years later. But when I was a kid and I lived in, in Pakistan, we used to... When we would go to like a wedding or to a really fancy dinner, they would have pudding like in a vessel and it would have a thin layer of gold or silver lying on top of it and you would eat it i love that yeah, i mean nice. edible gold leaf is also popular in cocktails these days but we're back to cocktails <clears throat> but i think that's uh yeah it's, you know a little glam i mean what happens when it goes into your body i guess don't we have gold in us already i think it's like one of the elements that's part of like when they you know, Stay they, gold, pony boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know this. I, I've, I 
or, or those little articles they would say like what I is i don't know if it's organically occurring in the human they would say like i mean yes. some people have it in their teeth no but they would say like what's the what's the value of a human body oh. and they would break it down to its elements and, i see and a tiny bit of gold i think was one of them I don't know. interesting i might have made that up i mean maybe it's in the soil we should um maybe or maybe it's Yeah, maybe it's something we eat. I don't know. This is getting to be interesting. Somebody is asking, can you see a face or a character in there? Yes, definitely. Two eyes. Especially the, since nose. you turned it upside down, right? Yeah, two eyes. I a think nose, so too. A forehead, a big thing of hair. I think the eyebrows, I see. Let's do the mouth now. Cool. Although Gina's granddaughter says it looks like a fox chasing a bee. Well, she's right. She sees better than what I do. <laughs> Is she nine? That's what we need to know. No, she's she, the expert. She's 37, actually. <laughs> Speaking of uh, large, mature children, my son and his girlfriend have been in Mexico on a road trip for like three weeks and we didn't hear from them for four days Ugh. i woke up this morning in a panic i was like what if they disappeared into mexico somewhere and fortunately we finally heard from him and he apologized for disappearing but he was in the depths of the mexican jungle where there was no wi-fi or no service no verizon I like the fact that there are still places you can go to where there's no signal. I don't like it when your children are there. No. I like that he's having that experience. He apologized. He should have notified us. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, he's he spends a lot of time online, as do most of us. So I think it is good for him to be away from it. But still a little scary. Not great for Papa. Well, I was just imagining, like, you know. Some yeah, it, you start g gaming, like, what you would think you about every TV do? show you've ever seen about that, like, you know, like traveling down to Mexico. I'm looking, have you seen this boy? You know, showing various guys in sombreros. Have you seen well, there this? was some kind of movie we watched not that long ago where it was, it was the reverse. It was a kid trying to locate her mother. Who That's was right, missing. yeah. And she had like... That was the movie, that was the one that... Uh, that yeah. Yeah, so my son's girlfriend worked on that movie. I think it was called movie. Missing. Was she it called Missing? Perhaps. It was a stressful film. I'm not sure I'm going to recommend it to the audience because... Well, fortunately, I don't think it's called Missing, so we're not recommending it because that's <laughs> not... Yeah. Just don't go missing. Nobody nobody go Just missing. Just don't. Just stop it. Find a be off-grid, but let, let someone you love know. Speaking of off-grid, I've drawn a perfect grid. I've drawn a series of perfect grids here. Subliminal? I think not. Yeah, I really see the face. I mean, so strongly now. I can't not see it at this point. Yeah. Our eyes want to find faces. There's that whole thing, you know, when they have like photographs of like faucets and it looks like a face. There's like this, there's a whole phenomenon that's that's called that. That's that when you see a face in a thing that isn't a face. Uncanny Valley? It? No, it's literally, there's a one word there's a one word um, term for that. Does anybody know what it is? Stephanie just put yes. a word Paridolia. I don't know. Pareidolia. Pareidolia. Pared and it's, yes, exactly. Our viewers are so smart. Well, that's why they are our viewers. <laughs> I like Tina, what Stephanie said. <laughs> Well, you know how there's also people who don't have the ability to see faces? Right, like they can remember names but can't, couldn't well, recognize. Not even that. They can identify features, but they can't assemble it into a face, Oof. like in their brain. Yeah. That must make life very difficult. Well. And I guess you live. I think you learn, you adapt, right? Look, I've learned to live with all of my many shortcomings. And special qualities. And you've learned to live with all of my special qualities, too. 
I love all of your qualities. <laughs> See, now I'm tempted. It's like, this looks like a nostril. Right? So it depends. Is this the nose or is this the nose? See, then if that was dark, it would look like a nostril more. But this is definitely feels like an eye. Pareidolia. Face blind, Kate says. You're acquainted with one person who lives with that, but are they acquainted with you? Sometimes. Gina says, I saw a photo with a pair of pants lying over a chair and the pockets looked like suspicious eyes. Haunting. Isn't that a song? <laughs> suspicious eyes, no? No, isn't it? It's an eagle eyes? No. no. Prying eyes. No. It is. It's like Hall and Oates. Yeah, Hall and Oates. Did you see Hall and Oates are having a lawsuit with each other? No. What has the world come to? Why? Well, he did invent overnight oats, and I just think that he's not getting the, his due. <laughs> oh, brother. Suspicious minds. Susp it's not eyes? Oh, it's Betty Davis' eyes came out around the same time, I think. Maybe. They've conflated in my mind. Neither song did I particularly like. You a Hall Notes fan? Sure. Yeah. I'm a child of that time period. It's nostalgic. And they have some catchy tunes. But I don't, I don't like the fact that they're feuding. I find that unfriendly. How old are they? Are they just like, did one of them get on, on the other one's lawn or something? I don't know. It probably has to do with money, money, money. Don't they have enough money? Come on. I don't know. I, don't you wonder if some of these... Musicians had creative accountants who... There you go. ...dispatched with their riches. Damned accountants. Shalini says she sees a woman's face, but I'm seeing a man's face. Are you seeing a woman or a man in your face? A man. Yeah, I, I see a man's well, face. It has, a, it has this big curly hair has this forehead. It has, I guess this is an ear. And I'm not sure what all this is. It's kind of like an elephant man. This is KB is here for the first time watching you live. Isn't that I, fun? I'm glad you're here. Um, Garrett's Nancy is, Beck, I see an assortment of cocktails. Have I told you lately that I love you? <laughs> Garrett says lying eyes by the eagles. No. Maybe. Perhaps. Eagles? I think we were thinking of suspicious minds. I thought it was eyes. Okay, so in the sort of Private eyes, they're watching you. There you go, private eyes. They see your every move. I like it. All I can think to do is parallel lines and grids. I'm sorry. I want to be more creative. What about swirly twirly? Well, what I'm thinking is herringbone. Oh, I like it. I like the plaid effect. Well, the checkers, you mean? Because I haven't really done plaid. I, I consider that, yeah, the checkers, I think, are plaid. Hey, we just have another Phoenician popped up. Paul oh, McCarthy. Really? How'd, you like that? How'd you like that rain last night? <clears throat> Our landlord was a McCarthy. Wonder. Our landlord was a McCarthy? Oh, no, he wasn't. I'm wrong. No, he was a Kafka. Yeah. I'm thinking of Rick in New York. Never mind. Well, Paul, howdy, partner. Howdy, pard. My dad used to always say that. Howdy, pard. Jenny is a, is a uh, native Phoenician. Yeah. She's risen from the ashes many times. <laughs> Back when we used to ride our horse to school. You know what? I think I'm done. I really? Well. You have eight more minutes. I know, but I want to drink some coffee. Okay. All right. I'm going to. I'm going to. Somebody is demanding dots. Kate, I think you're right. I think dots would be a good. Dots. 
Dots okay, I'll do some dots. Good. Dot Where's is my good. Oil wash? Maybe you should wash dot. You could gouache dot over some of the other patterns. Yeah, well, I'm thinking I'm going to get into a bit of Vasa color. It's a bit of a cheat, but I'm filling in this large area with watercolor. Why is that cheating? Well, it's no cheating in art. It's because I'm lazy. It's not because you're lazy. It's because you felt caught up in the moment. No, it's because I'm because I was like, hmm, how can I be more efficient and fill this in quickly? <laughs> Your hand was cramping. Mm, I'm just. Maybe I'll try these. I tried these already. Why do I not try? Bit of. I'm surrounded by piles of art supplies. It's time to make sure that they all get used. Picked up some color from the other. Yeah, I really neighbor. don't like that scratchy, scratchy sound. Sorry. Reminds me of the stump blender. Oh god, that paint's heinous. Heinous. This is one of my favorite bands in the eighties. <laughs> stump blender. I have to say, I'm still really madly in love with these Ecoline brush pens. Aren't they Ecolini? Eco, I've I've always called them Ecoline, but they're not Italian. Oh, they're, they're not. No, they're. I just I've always called them that, but they're actually, I think they're German. Ecoline. I saw in the chat some people from Germany, maybe oh, from wunderbar. Hamburg. Wunderbar. Yeah. It was so good that I'm going to do it again on this side. You're allowed to uh, copy. Steal? No, I mean, you're allowed to use the same color in another place. Oh, for sure. According again, to the no handbook. Rules. The, the nine-year-old arbitrary Acor rules. Do you think nine-year-olds have no rules? No, I think they like, they like things that have structure. That's true. Did you have a lot of rules when you were nine? I did indeed. What do you remember about being nine? I mean, I had I have only pleasant memories of my childhood at that time. I played in a lot of sports. I enjoyed going to school. I went on fun we went on fun camping trips with my parents and our camper. That sounds so nice. I was sort of a hyperactive child, so, you know, there was a lot of being told to go run. Go run, <laughs> just get out and leave us, go kind ride of like, your bike. Uh, what is that thing that Cesar Milano would always do, draining your energy? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it was a time when, as a nine-year-old, you had a fair amount of autonomy. You could leave the house on your bike. You could go, you know, play in a construction zone drink out of a garden hose and eat an orange off the tree and then come home when the light was going down. I don't know. We used to, that was a thing. I went from being basically unparented to living with my grandparents who generally had a lot of rules. Well, and you had um, a formula dinner, the same dinner every night, right? I ate the, I ate the same exact thing every every night, which was mashed potatoes forming um, a moat. And in the inside of it was basically ground beef. Minced meat. Yeah. And I would eat Did that. it have a little gravy? Mm, I don't remember. And this was in Pakistan. And then yeah. you had a little pudding with gold leaf on it? No. <laughs> like the pasha that you were? No, I didn't. I had chocolate pudding occasionally. It was only if we went to a wedding or we something. We were big on dessert in my house. We had ice cream, I think, every night. We always had more than one flavor of ice cream in the house. Um, we had a, a 
cheese course and we had fruit. It's very Euro. My, parent, my grandparents were very Euro. What was it like when you lived in Australia? What did you eat there? Um, then I was basically subjected to my mother's cooking. <laughs> um, which is, she only made like three things. It was reasonable. Um, and I don't, I don't know. That whole period of my life is sort of a blank. Uh, all right, I've uh, got the ear left to do. And then we're done. We have uh, one minute. Talk about landing a plane. I think I brought this in perfectly on time. Proud of you, babe. Thank you. I'm a professional. Professional. I'm still doodler. waiting for dots. You're not going to do it. You're going to... Yeah. Dots be damned. I've done circles, but I'm not doing dots. I'll be damned if I'll do dots. It's your drawing and you dot if you want to. I love that song. This is the final one. This is the final little piece right in here. Nailed it. <laughs> there you go. That is a masterpiece. Did you have fun? Call the Whitney back and tell them I'm ready. The <laughs> did, but more importantly, did you have fun? It was hellish. It was, a, it was completely miserable. No, I had a lot of fun. It was just, I don't know, it was mindless. It was nice having a conversation while doing it. You know, it's the kind of thing you can do, oh. like you're watching TV or... Ooh, what's that? Oh, that back to reality. Sorry, uh, that's back it. to reality. Um, so <laughs> Our sleepy mascot is here. Lorraine says, will I be disqualified for seeing fish? Yes. You're, you're out of here, Lorraine. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be nice to Lorraine. We gave her I'm a sorry, little Lorraine, bit I of agita you. last week because yeah. she was being nice to me. And yes. she thought we were... Picking on her. Lorraine. All right, Tina had a good you. time. Thank you for coming. Um, thanks all for being here. And Sh send us your art. We want to see yeah, it. I have a really good idea. Let's do this again next week. <laughs> so, um, yes. So, post your stuff on uh, Instagram or on Facebook. Your, your, your weird quilt drawing thing. Um, and tag it, hashtag SBS Draw With Me. SBS stands for Sketchbook School. And uh, we'll go and hunt it down and find it, and we'll put it into our little gallery at the beginning. Um, if you want to write to us, draw with me at sketchbookschool.com. It usually works. If you just want to let us know. Don't send us your pictures, unfortunately. I mean, you can. I mean, you, you can. Some have. people do, but it's, not, have to. it's yeah, not ideal it's because me, it's, I miss them sometimes. We have a whole system for how we do it, so it's better if you post it. Or put it in the schoolyard. And uh, dannysessays.com is my weekly essay. It is free. And you can sign up for it and you can get all kinds of stuff. You can send you can send us mail too. Yeah. There you go. Um, I'll Teach You to Draw is this new series, How to Draw, that I've been doing on the last couple of weeks. I'm about to shoot a new one today. I just posted another one a few days ago. And people seem to like it. I hope you do too. If you'd like to check it out, I'll put a link here for you. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Give us a thumbs up. If you subscribe, we can let you know when we're going to do this again. But I can tell you when we're going to do it again. It's always which is the same next, time. Next Thursday, 9 a.m. Pacific. But if you need a reminder, there you go. Subscribe and you will be reminded. Thanks very much. See you again next week.